No matter how much Nintendo's president Shigeo Takuda denies that a portable-only Nintendo Switch is coming out, most people believe it's gonna happen sooner or later, with most rumors claiming that it'll come out by the end of 2019. And assuming this is all true, that'd mean the 3DS and Nintendo's line of dedicated handhelds is probably gonna be over once and for all. But since we don't have any details over what a Switch Mini might actually be, it's still too early to say that it'll be a superior handheld to the 3DS. Cause having more power doesn't mean that it's gonna be a better portable. Cause as it stands right now, the 3DS has a few advantages for gaming on the go over the Switch. So crack open a can of foamy horse water, don't tell the police where your neighbor's hiding, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the undisputed champion of fun, Cameron, to determine what the rumored Switch Mini would need to do to be a better portable than the 3DS in every conceivable way. For those of you who don't know, the rumors behind the Switch Mini are basically that it's going to be a smaller and cheaper Nintendo Switch without detachable Joy-Cons, and that it can't be docked to play games on a TV. But since it's just a rumor at the time of this recording, let's assume it's 100% true for the sake of this video. Despite being a hybrid, the Nintendo Switch has always been looked at as more of a console than a handheld. And a big reason for this is because the 3DS didn't fade away like the Wii U, even though most people thought it would have died as soon as the Switch became a thing. But despite the Switch being far more powerful and selling out the ass, the 3DS's sales are fading away now more than ever. But people are still still buying it, and despite the Switch's arrival, there's still new games coming out for it in 2019. Most 3DS games that came out after the Switch have either been ports from older Nintendo systems, or localizations of 3DS games that came out in Japan a long time ago. Despite that though, the early 2011 handheld's still been getting a lot of new games and selling into 2019 nonetheless. And the two main reasons why the 3DS won't die is because it's a better starter console than the Switch with it being cheaper, and because it's a better portable than the Switch. So if the Switch Mini's purpose is to replace the 3DS's Nintendo's portable or starter console, then it has to deliver in every area to truly be better. As far as the Switch Mini being a better starter console, though, I think it's gonna be hard to top the 3DS, since the main appeal to a 3DS in 2019 is how cheap it is. Plus, there's already an assload of amazing 3DS games, and they're all cheap as well. For 150 cold hard American dollars, you can get a new 2DS XL that comes bundled with a damn good game. And if you're really struggling to pay your egg taxes at the end of the month, and you could just get a normal 2DS for $80 that also comes with a game. Not to mention that the better Switch games cost 60 whereas you won't have to pay more than 40 for 3DS games. And many of the best 3DS games are only 20. I don't see a Switch Mini being cheaper than 180, and I doubt it's gonna come with a game. And since graphics don't matter at all for something that's supposed to be your first gaming device, I think the 3DS is the better starter console, hands down. But I do see why Nintendo would want to replace it at this point. Because even if the Switch Mini's not gonna happen, the 3DS is still gonna die any day now. And since the 3DS appeals to people who might not want to spend $300 to play games, a Switch Mini'd be perfect for that demographic, and it'd only grow the Switch's install base even more. But as far as portability goes, ignoring any of the 3DS's handheld qualities is just gonna make the Switch Mini inferior. Obviously, the Switch Mini is gonna be more graphically impressive, but there's more to what makes a good portable gaming device than just power. As much as I like the Switch's portability, I still find myself playing the 3DS more when I travel. And to me, the biggest reason for this is because the 3DS's clamshell design. If the Switch Mini's made with anything other than a clamshell design, I'm gonna be more disappointed than the time I caught my dad watching Shotgun Saturday Night naked. If you make a portable dedicated gaming device, then using a clamshell design ought to be a law. It's more comfortable with your hands being closer together and under a screen, it makes the console half the size while using less battery when it's closed, and most importantly, it's a natural screen protector like Mother Nature intended. It's disappointing buying a Switch wanting to take it with you on the go, only to realize that you pretty much have to buy a case for it too. But aside from the Switch's current aesthetics not being ideal for portability, there's also the issue of the battery life. To be honest though, I'm not as harsh on the Switch's battery life as most people are. The battery lasts about 3 hours, and if I'm planning on playing a game that long, then I'm just gonna bring a power bank with me anyway. Regardless though, I still think the Switch Mini needs to last another hour or two. With the first Switch model, Nintendo's attitude was, hey, frig off, you're lucky to be able to take this with you, asshole. But for a gaming device that's dedicated to portability, it really shouldn't last any less than 5 hours. Especially when the 3DS lasts for... oh. Apparently 3 to 5 hours. Well, that's weird. I swear mine lasts longer than that. Maybe it has something to do with me never playing in 3D, but I could have sworn I had 6 hours of playtime in Persona Q before my battery started dying. Oh well, the 3DS seems like it lasts a long time anyway. But speaking of not playing games in 3D, I'd be shocked if that's something the Switch Mini offers. I was impressed the first time I used 3D on the 3DS, and it's pretty crazy they were able to make it track your face so you don't have to stare at the screen holding a posture that makes you look like a dweeb. But I've never even had a partial play session in 3D. I've only ever turned it on for a cut scene here or there only to forget about it shortly 
shortly after. And since that's how pretty much everybody used the 3D, it wouldn't make sense for Nintendo to drive the price up and kill the battery life by forcing 3D onto the Switch Mini. And all this should go without saying since none of the Switch's thousand plus games were made in 3D anyway. But for the two people out there who liked using the 3D regularly, the Switch Mini's just not gonna fill that void in your heart. As for everybody else though, I don't think it's gonna be missed. But I suppose not having 3D would make a Mini Switch a successor to the 2DS rather than the 3DS. I mean, the 2DS is technically a different thing since you can't call it a 3DS if you take the 3D away. That'd be like making the second model of the GameCube with a different shape, or making a Switch that you can't switch between docked and hand- oh shit, they probably shouldn't call it a Switch Mini. But what else could you really name it? The best thing I could think of off the top of my ass is a new Wii U Deluxe. But if you have a better idea, leave it in the comments. For the sake of comparing a Mini Switch with a 3DS though, I guess it really doesn't matter anyway. But one thing the 3DS is gonna have over a Switch Mini though is the second screen. I know a lot of people see the second screen as gimmicky like the 3D and probably wouldn't consider losing it a negative. But I don't know, I always thought it actually made games better, even to have something as simple as a map on the bottom screen. I mean, we don't know that Nintendo's not gonna have two screens with a Switch Mini, but I'm not holding my breath over it since it's never gonna happen and I'd just run out of air and die. After all, it just drive the cost up and nobody really wants it. Since the Switch does have a touch screen though, it is worth noting that the fondling of your console is going to be done in the same place as the viewing, but games with touch controls would actually work better that way since the bottom screen of the 3DS is tinier than a certain something that followers of this channel are aware of. I think it's great to make Switch games that are specifically made with handheld play in mind, but when games don't work or are seriously hindered by playing them docked, it's just kind of weird. Like, The World Ends With You is apparently amazing, I wouldn't know to be honest, but this guy I know named Carl says playing it with a Joy-Con sucks. And this isn't a comparison to the 3DS necessarily, but a Switch Mini not having detachable Joy-Cons would be another thing that's weird besides select games having mandatory touch controls. For all I know, the Switch Mini will let you take the Joy-Cons off though, and if you're watching this video in the future and that ended up being the case, then feel free to belittle me in the comments for being uninformed. But imagine getting a Switch Mini as a kid and 1-2 Switch is the game he got. Not that playing games with Joy-Cons in tabletop mode isn't kinda miserable anyway, but it'd be worse if you didn't even have the option to play those kinds of games. And since those controllers are kinda part of the Switch's overall package, it's kinda hard to imagine them not being detachable. And I'm sure Nintendo makes a lot of money on Joy-Con sales from people wanting to change their color schemes up. Maybe the Joy-Cons are too big for this to be possible, but the Switch tablet without the Joy-Cons really isn't that much bigger than the 3DS XL, so if you could just put the Joy-Cons under that with a smaller screen, then I think Nintendo could figure a good clamshell design out with detachable controllers. Either way though, we keep coming back to how important a clamshell design is for the Switch Mini to be a worthy successor to the 3DS. It's the bare minimum if you're losing 3D dual screens and a microphone. Oh yeah, I forgot about the microphone, but I can't think of a 3DS game that even used it, and all three of my experiences with the microphone on the DS have been negative. Blowing balloons up in Mario Mario Kart DS made me feel lightheaded. The flute and spirit tracks can suck my ass. And forgetting to turn the mic off in Wi-Fi battles for Heart Gold and Soul Silver was more awkward than that time I met up with my neighbor Terry on a blind date. So if you ask me, I think losing the microphone's actually a point for the Switch Mini. However, since it's a universally known fact that Nintendo never misses one of my videos, let me just rudely request that you jerks give a street pass back. The official reason given by Endog as to why they got rid of Street Pass in the first place was because the Switch is more of a home console than a portable, and I'm not even sure if the Switch is capable of near-field communication, but I really want Street Pass to come back even if it's exclusive to the Switch Mini. It was always fun carrying your 3DS around with you and seeing all the people you cross paths with that day, and the bonuses offered to you in games for doing this was fun too. This may have to do with the fact that I'm a butt dumpling, but unlocking all the ridiculous hats was kind of addicting. I even used to carry my 3DS around with me at work so I could earn more coins. But since you were only allowed to earn 10 coins per day, I'd have to go to the bathroom at my work and change the date to the previous day, with the system's time being between 9 through 11 p.m. depending on how much walking I thought I'd be doing. That way if I earned 10 coins and didn't have a chance to get to the bathroom to reset the date, the 3DS would at least think the next day began and I could earn 10 more coins. It's for these reasons why I've opened the system settings on the 3DS over 2,000 times, which is pretty lame. So if Nintendo brings Street Pass back, I hope they don't limit how many coins we could get per day. But if we don't get Street Pass at all, I'm never gonna accept the Switch Mini as a true successor to the 2DS. I'm sure it'll still be great, but a portable gaming device should be more than just a way to play games while making brown. And hopefully, if Nintendo does release a portable Switch, I just hope they have the common sense to not lock games and save files to one console. But then again, Nintendo has done dumber things. At any rate though, I hope the Switch Mini's more than just a powerful handheld. Otherwise, I don't really see a point. A handheld gaming device should be convenient to carry around in your pocket and feel personal. And if the Switch Mini doesn't have a clamshell design with Street Pass, then the 3DS is always going to be my favorite handheld. Well, that is with the exception of our patrons of the day, Walu Waifu and Hamlord. You two are always going to be my favorite portable gaming devices, just like everyone else who supports this channel on Patreon for loot boxes and Polaroids in the mail. If you want to support this channel otherwise, though, then consider visiting our merch store where you could pick up a shirt or coffee mug. Because let me tell you, these have been scientifically proven to land you a hot date. And if you want to make a cameo, then just send us pictures of videos of you rocking the merch like these legends right here. What do you want out of a Switch Mini, though? 
Do you want one at all? Will you still prefer the 3DS? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, I'll pin whatever I find most entertaining or intriguing. Don't forget to subscribe to prove to your parents you're a badass who likes being pandered to and insulates. And if you like and share this video, that goes a long way to help this channel grow. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.